Okay, um, so yeah, for this work, we are actually working on uh, detecting um, uh, solutions for airdrop hunters in NFT markets. Um, I know NFT market is not that popular this year, but last year was very hot, right? So um, uh, I'll probably spend more time on talking about motivations and data sets, uh, especially the motivations. I believe many of you probably have no idea regarding the uh, Web3 and crypto um, societies. So what is, first of all, I'd like to briefly introduce the uh, concept of airdrops. Okay? So what is an airdrop? Airdrop is a way of distributing the tokens to massive addresses in the um, blockchain, on, on chain. And usually it's free candy. So a lot of people are actually trying to get the airdrops and sell them in the secondary markets to get profits. Okay? So here we have a, a number of famous um, airdrop cases, for example, like Uniswap. They have 15% of the tokens distributed as an airdrop. And also DYDX and Paraswap. Those are very famous airdrop cases. So why airdrop is so interesting that we focus on this topic? Um, first of all, actually it is the Web3's most unique business model. I mean, before Web3 was proposed, unfortunately, we are not able to do something like airdrops, okay? Because um, um, in order to do airdrop, you need to rely on the, you need to rely on the transparency of the blockchain data. Lots of people are actually using decentralized applications on chain, and based on that, their activities on chain, we are able to do airdrops, okay? Because we need to trace their activities and eventually use those uh, activities as certificates of their interactions with our smart contracts. So this is very unique in Web3. Uh, the second reason is that um, actually airdrop is a proof of Web3 data ownerships. Lots of people, when they mention Web3, they're talking about ownership of data, right? Unfortunately, for example, if you ever know the NFTs, you realize that many NFTs are actually images on chain, right? So you can download the images for free. You can, so, so actually the best way of getting an NFT is right click and save is a image on your desktop and you can use it freely, right? So, well, how can we prove that you do have the ownership of Web3 um, digital assets? Well, I think uh, AirDrop is a very good way of doing that because as the owner, or the owner of an NFT, right, is associated with your address and your interactive activities and also your proof of ownership could be proved by, uh, uh, by the control of the address, okay? So uh, once they're doing the airdrops, they will actually airdrop to those address that have the ownership of the NFTs. So this is a very important thing because uh, eventually, um, when we're talking about Web3, we're talking about users that could be beneficial of the business growth. So that's why you know, airdrop itself is, is very interesting in this area. And however, we have a lot of issues regarding airdrops, okay? Uh, one problem is the rise of the airdrop hunters. Um, what is an airdrop hunters? It's a human or even organization um, that control many addresses of for profits. So they are actually, because actually for blockchain, you're able to generate thousands or millions of address in just one command line, right? In probably two seconds. So a lot of people are actually creating those fake address and then use those fake address to uh, claim for airdrop tokens. So um, the reason behind the airdrop hunters, because while well, we do have the you know pseudonymous problems or we said anonymous problems behind uh, the use of the blockchain address, so it's a, actually a simple attack. So the problem uh, of the um, airdrop hunters could be uh, related to financial problems. Okay, for example, financial instabilities, because lots of airdrop hunters they after they receive the tokens they will dump in immediately, so that. Unfortunately, um, the token itself has a very low uh, price after uh, the, the launch of the airdrops. And the second problem is decentralization, okay? Um, because um, you know, uh, when we are trying to do airdrop, we hope that we can dis disseminate the tokens to more people so that they can involve in the uh, and decentralized autonomous organization in the future. But if a party that controls a lot of tokens becomes airdrops hunters, then they have more voting powers than e eventually dominating the whole community. And that's something we don't want. So can we do something to prevent airdrop hunters? Actually, we do already see lots of uh, solutions. For example, I'm not sure if you know, um, last month, uh, a very famous project called Layer Zero, um, they, they actually proposed to, uh, to the whole community that if you are civil attack uh, airdrop hunters, then you can claim by yourself, you can still get 15% of their token, okay? So it's kind of like a way for you to uh, uh, prevent the attack of the uh, CBO. However, still, it's very challenging uh, to identify those airdrop hunters um, because, well, they do have lots of strategy. We have a paper published last year in uh, Kai uh, talking about our case studies in uh, Paris Web, okay, we identified that while well, airdrop hunters, they have different ways, different approaches uh, to uh, 
well, to get those tokens for multiple purpose, okay? So, um, and especially these hunters strategy might evolve because, um, you know, according to different policies proposed by project uh, creators, uh, they might use different ways uh, around. So our proposal is that probably we can use the data on chain to construct the address profile. Okay, so the idea is that we propose a dynamic learning system for airdrop hunters' action patterns and eventually use it to identify them. So um, in order to do this, we, create, uh, we, 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 we perform a case study. Um, that will be the uh, BLUR. Uh, BLUR was the, probably the, the most famous project last year for NFT. Okay? It is currently probably the, the, the largest NFT marketplace. But before 2023, actually the biggest marketplace was OpenSea. Okay? OpenSea is very famous for uh, NFT tradings. But BLUR okay, um, has done a very good um, approach by doing air jobs last year. Okay. So as you can see, this is the, um, the data we crawl from the internet. As you can see, the, uh, the, the comparison between Blur and, and OpenSea. And you realize that the, uh, on February 15th, 2023, Blur started his airdrop. And from that point of view, uh, from that point, <coughs> you can see that more and more traffic goes to Blur, okay, goes to Blur. So uh, actually it supports the activities in OpenSea. So why, why we choose Blur? Well, first of all, it's among the most popular decentralized vacations last year, okay? And it challenges OpenSea, as I mentioned. And uh, one of the, uh, uh, lots of people consider the success of the Blur launch is because of the uh, successful launch of the airdrops. So it has a large data set for us to do machine learning. And um, another reason we choose Blur because uh, we have proved that there is a sense of airdrop hunters. Actually, 15% of the tra uh, 50 percent of the trading volumes are actually from less than 30 wallets. So a lot of people are actually using uh, those wallets to claim for tokens for Blur. And actually, 1% of the whales, they host 84% of the total value in the Blur's uh, bit balls. Okay. And the third reason we choose Blur because um, the trading access, they are NFTs. Okay. So NFT is different from traditional ERC-20 token um, is non-fungible, okay? So it's relatively easier for us to trace them. Um, and it's also considered the cornerstone of the Web3 metaverse. It's a better governance token for DAO, um, so that's why we choose them. And of course, the non-fungible feature could be used in our system design. So our motivation is that we realize that there are a lot of patterns um, in graph structures, as you can see. Uh, all the tradings for NFTs could be considered as, as, as a graph, right? So you're able to find those loops in the trading, and you can also find those stars that, you know, trading the NFTs among a selective uh, small group of the um, uh, address. So um, that's the motivation for us. Uh, we are going to build up the graph learning systems for it. So we collect the data from a blur um, between um, October 19, 2022 and April 1st, 2023. Uh, well, just uh, air before airdrop and after airdrop, okay? Um, so we have lots of records for blur airdrops. Um, it's about uh, 123,000 blurs, okay? And also the activities for these address and also the trading uh, secondary uh, markets for the NFTs. So as you can see, we have more than 1 million uh, trading NFTs, and also they are metadata because um, those NFTs, they have images. So we have images, we have descriptions, we have the, all the attributes. So in order to construct a graph, we are trying to formulate all the transaction flows. Okay, so um, this is how you can formulate it. After you have the NFTs, you have, um, uh, for each um, address, you might have different activities connected to ETH or ERC20, um, or NFTs, or even a smart contract, for example, like the blurs. So we formulate their interactives, okay, um, in or out, or even the uh, blur swap or blur exchange, those activities, and we formulate them as A actions. And we create a sequence for those A actions, and we do a accumulated count for their interactivities of these uh, different A types. And for, so that in this case, for different address, we will have um, those activities. So, um, well, uh, for the time, um, because because the time limitation, uh, we are not able to talk about the details, but we actually use the labeling solutions to find out which group it belongs to, and then eventually we propose the ultimate solutions, okay? So in this solution, we try to construct a graph, and this graph has the node of the address and also edge for the NFT trading informations. And we tr we're going to train the models for edge of hunters detections. Um, the basic features, okay, these are the basic features for address features. Um, we, we, we try to uh, find out their asset values and also their 
uh, interactivities of the uh, NFTs. And we also uh, try to um, uh, embed the access turnover rate and also the wallet activity features and even the market manipulation price features as a vector. Um, we also uh, try to figure out the acquisitions of the airdrop tokens as a post hoc features to test uh, um, the, the, the solutions our, 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 our approach. Um, for the edge of the NFT tradings, um, we in try to encode the multi-model features for each images. So we try to use VIT for images and BERT for the uh, distribution, uh, the, the, the description attributes. Uh, we aggregate the information based on the, uh, the trading route of an NFT. Okay, so we, uh, we can extend the, the information from different routes, from uh, K hops, okay, from one hop to K hops. And we have some um, uh, some optimizations on the training process. One is the uh, we realize that the existence of the super nodes. So we actually propose a inverse frequency sampling so that we are able to uh, minimize the impact of those super nodes. We also have uh, realized that the um, the imbalance of the positive and negative samples, okay, because we only have uh, about four thousand airdrop hunters. So uh, we actually have a batch balance solution for it. So for the evaluation, uh, first of all, it's about the uh, parameter selections. Okay, so we actually conduct um, our simulations to uh, our, our experiments to see uh, which is the optimal uh, depth k and also the uh, beta for the impacts. And we compare with the uh, structure ML models, uh, with uh, graphic embedding models, and also general GIN models. Uh, it turns out the overall performance of our uh, uh, proposal is the best. And if you take a look at the details, you realize that our precision is the best, while our recall rate is relatively small. It's, it's, it's actually uh, not the best, okay, if you compare to uh, general GNN models. Uh, the reason is that actually our model posts higher bar in 100 detections. So yeah, that, that, that's the reason, yeah. We also compare with non-real-time improvements, as I mentioned. So if you compare with the performance with the airdrop count, we realize that they're actually similar. Okay, so it won't make an impact on the uh, final solutions. Um, well, we also conduct the uh, ablation studies uh, to see what kind of features will have uh, impacts on the uh, final solutions. And it seems that they all have significant impacts on the um, uh, uh, machine learning process. Okay, so um, actually we are proud to, to be one of the ADA uh, open source projects um, uh, papers that, uh, in triple W24. So um, we have all our code open source and all the data available online. So if you're uh, interested in this research, you can um, download our uh, code and also our data sets online. Thank you very much.